Duders, Wags with Ironman 4x4. Today, you and I are gonna be installing lower trailing arm links on a fifth gen 4Runner. And the 100 series. It's part number LTA003. You can go to the website, which is on the internet, to buy these. Go get yourself a set, come back here, we'll get them put on your rig. If you're working in your garage, get your floor jack, get your jack stands, chalk your front tires, put your truck in, park, jack it up, get all ready to go. So why is Ironman 4x4's in links so much awesomer than everything else out there? I'm glad you asked. Most heavy duty lower links are just a two piece design, which means only one end is adjustable and the other end is completely solid. With the turnbuckle design, you can get these mounted in the truck and if you're off a little bit or you need to fine tune it for your alignment or to set your pinion angle, all you gotta do, loosen your jam nuts, spin the center turnbuckle, and they lengthen out or tighten up. It's such a smart design. And these things are heavy duty. Before we even start ripping the truck apart, we're gonna disassemble these, get some anti-sneeze on the threads because anything that lives under your truck is just gonna get hammered and will be susceptible, susceptible to freezing up. Make sure you break these jam nuts loose and then we're gonna spin the ends off. Most of this video is just watching me like turn stuff. All right, grab yourself some anti C's. All right, I'm gonna spin that back up. And these are reverse thread, so it's actually lefty tighty, righty roosy. Make sure to do both sides. All right, now we're ready to start ripping bolts out of this thing. We're gonna start with this 12 mil uh, bolt that holds the e-brake bracket on. So we'll spin that back, just like that. I don't wanna lose that, so I'm gonna put it back where it goes. Then we can switch out to a 19, and we'll pull this guy. Now, you wanna loosen this from the bolt side. The nut side on the back is a flange nut that's got those four like knurled teeth on it. It's not meant to be unscrewed from the nut side. And I'll show you what I was talking about. That's that flange nut. See those big old teeth? When that nut hits the face, it just locks down. So you don't wanna be tightening because you'll just tear up the backside there. Okay, so we'll pull this bolt out. And if it don't come out, you can just spin it out. That is it, man. That link just swings right out like that. Now we can get the back bolt removed. So now we're gonna swing around, we're behind the vehicle, and it's the same thing like it was up front. You got a 19 millimeter bolt. You just wanna loosen it, they kind of flipped it. So the bolt head is now on the inside. So let's break it loose. That was loud. And then we can just spin that serrated nut right like that. There, we'll slide this out. That is down, and that's it. What you listening to? All right, so let's set our Iron Man lower link up against our stock one. And the easiest way to try to get the adjustment correct, you don't need to measure, you don't need to do any of that. Take your stock bolts, we'll run them up underneath like this. Then we can set this Oh, we're a little short, okay, not a problem. We can start to loosen that turnbuckle up and get it where we need it. So we need to come out. So again, I'm gonna twist from the center and as I twist back towards me, it is lengthening out. Set them up and that is the perfect measurement. Now you might be tempted to try to tighten everything up on the bench, I'd wait because if something gets a little cockeyed or cattywampus, you're not gonna be able to get it back into your truck, right? You'll have to break it all loose anyways. So, tools. If you have a 46 millimeter wrench, you are seriously a boss and better than anybody I know. You're gonna need it for this jam nut. I don't have that, and most people I know don't. So you're gonna need a crescent wrench for the flats on the turnbuckle, and then big channel locks, or just grab a pipe wrench. Let's get this off of here, and we'll get it fitted back up into the truck. All right, so I'm gonna fit the back up in here, run that 19 mil bolt back through, spin down that serrated nut. I'm gonna swing around to the front side and get the front end. One thing you might run into 
is when you go to put the Iron Man link in, you'll go, oh crap, that's off. I can't get the bolt in. Something like, maybe I didn't lengthen it long enough. No, you did it right because we used our original OEM lower link. So our, our, our measurement is perfect. What happened is with that link out, the truck, you know, the, the rear axle moved just a little bit. So don't worry about that. We don't wanna change the length of this. You, you already had it right. So I'm gonna fit this link up here, and from the back side, I'm just gonna stick a, a pin back in here, and I'm gonna rock it back and get this. Got it. All right, bolts through. I'm gonna spin this nut on, and then we'll tighten it from the front side here. Cool, I'll get the back. Now we just need to tighten down the jam nuts. Be cognizant the front is gonna be a reverse thread. Okay, those are tight. All right, we got this all on and cleaned up. Last step, we're just gonna zip tie this e-brake line bracket to the link. And you can use a pipe clamp or get creative however you wanna do it, but I like using zip ties. Throw two in there. Cool. All right, we'll go do the same thing on the other side. All right, we got them in the truck. They look great. And I'm telling you, what a confidence builder. Cheap insurance and easy night's sleep when you're bouncing your truck over rocks and knowing that these things are gonna hold up to the abuse. Wanna get a set? Go to ironman4x4america.com. We'll help you over there.